Okay, so it's just a door opening. Now I feel like I'm playing Skyrim again. Just wander around looting. Everything's fine. Just wander around, loot some things. I don't even want to know. I don't want to know. I'm not asking. I don't care. Oh, I'm just getting this nice feeling. This music is really... Calm and soothing. Guest room. Study. Okay. Something strangely, um, Roman Empire or Third Reich about the whole look, isn't it? What's in here? Okay, what, what am I actually doing, by the way? Um, still trying to find this sanctuary. Storage! Um... For some reason, I want to try the upstairs rooms first. <laughs> and I'm not trying that room until there are no other choices. Okay, let's try the guest room. Let's sneak in, just in case. Herbert's trunk was wrapped in rope. The lock had been broken by thieves, he assumed. He wondered if anything had been left, considering all the hands it had passed. My journal is gone. What would they want with my journal? Okay, it looks like there's been burglars. Okay, this place is pretty well lit. Alright. So... Twelve tinderbox now. Okay. A letter, second of July, eighteen thirty nine. I received a letter today from the Algerian governor's office disclosing the fate of Herbert's expedition. About a week after my departure, Abdullah, one of the men traveling with us, returned from the desert. He was badly injured, as if maimed by a lion. The man rambled deliriously about the expedition being attacked by something horrible. The French quickly dispatched a search party to look for the expedition. After searching for days, they found the camp abandoned without any trace of Herbert or his men. Tomorrow, I'll retrieve the things they recovered from Herbert's tent at the customs house. I don't know what to make of it, but I'm worried for him. Okay. Crowbar? Yes! Can I can I can I hit things with the crowbar? No, no. It's not a weapon, is it? This game is not gonna let me use weapons. That would be That would be too nice, too Too easy. Okay. July 1839. 
Today I picked up Herbert's things at the customs house. I dug through the trove of documents he had carried and found a log detailing the expedition. The nature of this text ranged from quick notes to colorful accounts of transpired events. I skimmed the pages trying to figure out what might have happened. May 17th, the day I was trapped inside the orb chamber, May 17th. Herbert dryly <laughs> states, Independence he covered Day in Daniel Norway. after one hour of entrapment. This confused me greatly. I was suffocating within minutes. How could I have lasted an hour? I continued reading the peculiar text. Herbert states his facts without judgment or passion, but suddenly I could read frustration into his text. He pushed his men to investigate the underground tomb, an effort which seems to have strained the minds of his men. Madness spread through the ranks, and Herbert had to take some extreme measures to continue. He finally visits the chamber himself, where he retrieves the orb to the surface. His account confuses me greatly. If he has the orb, what are those pieces in my drawing room? Hmm. It's gotta be the first game I've ever played where lantern oil is like the most welcome thing. It's a rabbit! Yeah, don't worry about it if you don't understand that. It's sort of an in-joke. <laughs> Daughter stopped due to a... <laughs> Oh, right. Oh, sweet. I've actually got to do the... The key. Please, let it be here. Alright, okay, okay. Can I... Oh, so the crowbar, once it's... Once it's used, it's used. What key? What key? I see a note. Place to hide? Can I hide in here? I can hide in here. I can hide in here. Think very small thoughts. Oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god. Okay. Okay, the rest of this video is going to take part in this wardrobe. What was that? That was that was the door, right? That was the door. I can probably go out now, can't I? It's a nice wardrobe though. I rather like it. So that's, that's what wardrobes are for, hiding in. <sighs> okay, I was rummaging through things, wasn't I? July, 1839. Oh, July. It's done. But it, that's American Independence Day, isn't it? I was awakened by an exhausting nightmare. Shaking and sweating, I retired to the drawing room with a cup of tea. The relic pieces lay spread across the table as I'd left them. But somehow, I knew 
how it was supposed to be. I fetched the tar, which I had prepared to fix the pieces together, and without fault I joined them, producing the orb I remembered so clearly. The tar proved unnecessary. It was pushed out from the joining pieces as they merged on their own, with no okay, adhesive. A magically merging the orb. ancient stone relic now rests on my table. Its immaculate surface and perfect shape could have been molded by a factory. This is all too strange. Okay. An important key is hidden in the guest room. So there's a key in this guest room somewhere. One, second of July. That's not any type of Independence Day, is it? No. All right, so we've got to find a key in the guest room somewhere. I've already checked it, haven't I? Yes. I okay. Oh. Thank God. Thank God. There it is. I guess it is a good place to hide it then. Not really. One of the things that makes this game a teeny bit easy is whenever there's something you can interact with, you go near it. Oh. I, I, I don't want to break this because it's a monster. <laughs> Picked up machine room key. All right. So. See, this picture, no hand icon, makes it a tiny bit easy to figure out which items. Oh god, every time I hear one of those bugs I freak out. Alright, let's go to the nice back hall with all that cool music. Oh, that picture's pretty horrible. Okay, right. You know, having the house to myself means I can play this game and not worry about screaming. But it does mean when I finish this, I've got the house to myself. Machine why am I going to the study? I don't know why I'm going in the study, actually. I'm, I've got a machine key. What do I need the machine key for? Here now, let's um, let's check the place out. Okay, quite a lot of tinder bomb. Oh, A lot of stuff here. Little Assassin's Creed figure or something over there. Okay. All right. Okay. Too quiet. Oh, I've got fourteen of them. Might as well use them. Letter regarding the discovery of an orb to my most trusted student and friend, Johann Weyer. 
the most remarkable thing happened as I was traveling through the Prussian woods this summer. I finally found one of the orbs I've been looking for the last 20 odd years. It is as inexplicable as the Heliodromus described. No, what it? It is as inexplicable as the Heliodromus described it in the Hortus Conclusus. It was. As it was told about, an underground Mithraic temple crowned with the unearthly artifact. The orb was big enough to fill my cupped hands and the texture was smooth and jagged. Its colour washed washed while rich. It's a very old language. Contrast is not enough to describe its nature. It was an impossibility, an artificial paradox captured within stone. I was staying in a nearby village called Altstadt investigating one of the antiquated trails when I finally found the cavern. I went inside and suddenly I could verify the truth of these enigmatic artifacts. They were real. As you can understand, this is the most important discovery of my life, but it has also become my greatest fear. As I entered the underground chamber, I could feel that I was trespassing. Because of my curiosity, I did my best to fight these instincts and fetch the orb from its place. I scrambled out of the chamber and into the woods, and I could sense something was following me. It bayed loudly as it closed in. The beast, this guardian of the orb, was relentless in its pursuit. All right, so the thing chasing us wants the orb back, maybe? I made my way to a nearby ravine where I stumbled upon some men fishing in the lake. I tried to warm them as I passed, but fortunately they remained as I continued my escape. When I heard the, their cry of pain echo through the valley, I felt such a tremendous sense of relief, thinking I would be spared. It's a bit of a bastard, isn't he? Suddenly, a blue shimmering light engulfed me, and the colors of the forest were washed away before my eyes. I kept running through the bleak surroundings. The tree had turned charcoal black with leaves of cinder, the ground covered in murky water. I pressed on through the drenched land as the glowing ember gave way to the rising wind and rained on me. I could hear pleading screams in the distance, and I joined in as pain and fear overtook me. I fell to the ground, gasping for air. This certainly must sound strange, but I had not been carried miles away when it but I had been carried miles away from the Alps to a grassy field outside Genoa. The guardian had taken the orb from me, but still until this day, I feared its return. Sometimes I lie, lay awake at night listening for the howling cry I heard in the forest. It has been nearly a decade since that day, and I still haven't been able to write about the incident. The last time we spoke, you told me about your interest and ongoing research into the mythic orbs, and I realized I owed you the truth about my visit to Altstadt. Your friend and mentor, Heinrich Cornelius Agrippa. Okay, so... The orb was returned. The guardian got the orb back. This Heinrich guy was the guy that supposedly disappeared, but then died ten years later, claiming never to have any knowledge of this. Okay. Right. There's a door out there. There's also a wind. Okay. Dogs. Okay, dead end round there. So, this room.
Chambers of the humans, okay. Human anatomy. Tell me, that is not a horrifically evil-looking creature. But right, I'll tell you what, can I tip it upside down and drop it down the edge so I can't see it? Horrible things. All right. It's a bit of an amateur taxidermist. Canis lupus familiaris. Canis lupus familiaris. After a short study, it is clear that the agitation found amongst humans can be found in the dog. Fear and pain induce stress, which seems to trigger an endogenous response, causing the animal to burst with energy. I believe that the catalyst is produced in the brain. It is difficult to determine exactly what it is, but I can sense it. It reeks of cosmic genesis. There is an inherent problem in harvesting this enemy since energy, since the creature is bound to die from the exercise. Right, he's trying to get sort of life energy or something extracted. I must refine the process of torture to enable any real work to be done. This guy's a right piece of work, isn't he? More experiments must be performed, but it seems that only human beings are able to produce the amount necessary. It might be their ability to appreciate the severity of the process that ultimately, ultimately augments their experience of terror. Good God. Now this guy's evil. This is an evil guy. Fire's on. I mean, it's bad enough the candles are burning. There's something really creepy about a fire. Another letter. Oh, God. Right. This guy's a little sick, isn't he? And by a little, I mean huge amounts. Right. Okay, further disappointment. The antiquarian's latest findings yielded nothing. I'm still unable to grasp the inner workings of life and its relation to the power I sense within it. I shall pursue more books on the subject, but I suspect it will be in vain since no re research has been made in my particular interest. I must attempt to fill that void myself. Clearly humans emanate more of the energy I seek, but I hope animals will suffice as they pr will prove less of a hassle to acquire. This guy's trying to get eternal life, isn't he? He's attempting to become a lich. I know some people are going to go mental at the way I pronounce that because it's lich. It clearly states in the monster manual of Dungeons and Dragons that it's lich. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I say lich. I believe the etymology of the word is German, I believe, and actually means cadaver. Let me tell you what the etymology of the word is not. It is not Gary Gygax circa 1980s. All right. Uh, 
Um, did we achieve anything in here? Oh, um, how about abject terror? Does that count? 